I'll just say that the Composite Financial Index, or CFI, is a well-used, established, um, unique financial indicator for higher education institutions. There are four different perspectives of financial stability that are included in the CFI, and they're selected because they're considered to be indicators of um, financial stability and health that this institution would need to address consistently to maintain financial health. So they are um, represented by these four bullets, and these correspond to each of the ratios that we'll be looking at. So the first one is the primary reserve ratio, and this essentially looks at the institution's expendable wealth versus their expenses. Um, and this is really just kind of saying, okay, you know, is, is the institution capable of handling its operating commitments? Um, you know, are resources sufficient and flexible? The second one is called the viability ratio, which is what I mentioned earlier. It really only applies if you have debt because it's actually looking at your expendable wealth compared to your debt. And it's worth noting that the um, numerators for those first two ratios are actually the same. The only difference is for the first one, you're dividing by your total expenses, and for the second one, you're dividing by long-term debt. So it's looking at that expendable, you know, what you have that you can actually use versus those other obligations. So the third ratio is the return on net assets ratio, and this is essentially just looking at the change in your net assets over your total net assets. And this is a way of looking at whether or not you know you're how you're performing, whether or not um, you know you're living, you have enough, you generated return from your resources. So are you getting you know an economic return based on on what you're doing? The last one is what I think of as sort of the living within means ratio. Um, which is a looking at your um, operating revenue or operating income over total operating revenue. So this tool is obviously designed to collect information at a moment in time, a snapshot. But one thing to consider, in, and this would affect your process obviously, is some of these ratios are more meaningful if they're looked at on a rolling average basis because of those fluctuations. Again, you know, if you're doing a major capital expansion, you're you know, some of these ratios are gonna not look as good as they might, but that doesn't mean that's not a financially viable institution. One of the benefits um, of the CFI methodology is because it looks at these four, looks at financial stability from these four angles, um, you get kind of a more holistic perspective. So again, if you're not, if it happens that you're not doing well in one ratio, that could be offset by the other three. Does the terminology change all the time? Yeah. I mean, it's a good question. Sometimes they'll call it long-term debt. Sometimes they'll call it mortgage payable if it's to acquire property. Um, if you look at the notes here, some of them have revenue bonds. They might call them bonds payable. So okay. the key word is payable. Okay. <laughs> Owing mortgage. The policy before where some schools would get two and three year license terms. And that could be something the commission could yes. look at again. But right now, all institutions renew on an annual basis. We have begun to tweak our standards in such a way that online institutions could use the standards. These ratios up here about plant and property, think about online. Okay, Absolutely. Plant and property. So, <laughs> talk about the ratios changing. So, so this entire process here is uh, intended um, so that applicants can be licensed, right? But we want to make sure that they're in compliance to be licensed. That's, that's our goal. Right. So if off of one year we know that they're in compliance, I'm sure we can be happy with that result. But if they're not in compliance with that one year, then of course we can offer another avenue to sort of look at uh, their past year uh, or their three year history average so that we can help them get into compliance because I really think that's the intent of the commission. Yeah. We're not trying to exclude, we're trying to include. My name is Antoinette Mitchell. I'm the Deputy Assistant Superintendent for Post-Secondary and Career Education. This afternoon, we spent time reviewing a financial tool that the Education Licensure Commission will use as it reviews institutions uh, that are submitting applications for licensure. 
the tool is a wonderful way to help us understand the financial strengths and uh, challenges of institutions, and we're looking forward to using it.